175 Roger, can you alert the children with a nine-year-old child involved in an RTA? ETA, five minutes over. So then, the children, can I help you? It's Monday morning in the heart of Birmingham, and paramedics are bringing a young boy to one of the oldest hospitals in the city. The Birmingham Children's Hospital has been here since the turn of the century. Its 1,600 staff look after some of the sickest children in the country. Facilities are stretched to the limit. Hello, casualty. Blue light coming in, ETA, five minutes. We've got put custard gravy, fish fingers, and then we've got three choices. The hospital may be old, but ambulance staff know that the children they bring here will get some of the best medical treatment on offer. Casualty. Nine-year-old Kevin Wood has just arrived by ambulance after a car knocked him off his bike. X-rays show casualty doctors that Kevin has fractures to his leg and a suspected head injury. Left femur, tip fib, and so He's also in a lot of pain. All right, Kevin, OK. All right. Doctors can't relieve the pain until they know the extent of his injuries. I'm just worried about down here. Should we get a photo? Can we? Should we get a photograph of that? Yeah. Okay. Right, Kevin. We're going to roll you onto your side. Three. The leg wounds are easy to spot, but the team's worry is that Kevin may have internal injuries too. Take some big breaths in and out, Kevin. Okay. Up on Ward 3, Nurse Natalie Lawson has a new patient. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm going to be your nurse today. We've got your bed ready. Who have you got here with you? Higgins and Snowy. Oh, aren't they lovely? Should we take Higgins and Snowy and Mommy and Daddy down to your bed then? Okay. Five-year-old Gregory Swinburne has arrived for an operation on his face. Can you remember when you were here before? Tell me if you can remember. Gregory was born with a cleft lip and palate okay. and has been treated by a team of specialists at the Birmingham Children's Hospital for all his life. Yeah. It's your bed. It's got your name on ready. Can we get you to hop up on your bed? Can you manage that? Because it's a bit high, isn't it? Turn and help you up. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Right. What time did he say the operation was? About half past one, he'll go down. Right. Mm. He's first on the afternoon mist. He is the afternoon mist. There's yes. nobody else. <laughs> In previous visits, Surgeons rebuilt the missing roof in Gregory's mouth, helping him to eat and learn to speak normally. Gregory is an old hand at operations. This is his fourth. The first was at three months, second six. He had one about this time last year and uh, now today. Today, surgeons will reshape his nose and hope to close the holes in his palate which make eating a messy business. It'd be nice to have the things that everybody else has without having it all over your face, won't it, sweetheart? Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a social problem, especially now he's at school, because um, the discharge comes all the way down the nose. Now, they usually got a cold or something like that anyway, so he has lots of problems clearing the nose. And obviously at school, it's not necessarily uh, good for him. Do you get teased at school? Sometimes if they call, if they call me red flatness, I only, I only go a little bit red. And sometimes smoke comes out, and sometimes I get very angry, I go on fire, my hair goes on fire. It's the first thing people notice. Yeah. They don't see Gregory, they see his nose. And then they see Gregory, which is a shame, because he's lovely on his own. So it'd be nice to see you first, and then your nose, won't it, Greg? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Back in casualty, Kevin has been given morphine for the pain. But orthopaedic registrar Khalid Baloche is concerned that he may also have a head injury. Kevin, can you hear me? Can you open your eyes for me? Kevin, can you open your eyes for me? The hope is that either his stepfather or his mother can get him to respond. Kevin, Kev, can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me? Kevin, Kevin, can you hear me? Bob. Since he's actually been in, he's become more and more drowsy. Right. Yeah. The plan at the moment then is that we'll, we'll take him straight round for a CT scan. 
Okay. But what we need to make sure is that he's not got any serious brain injury. Okay. And the only way of finding that out is from the scan. Because he's not actually spoken no, since the no. accident at all. All sure. he's done is sure. cried. Well, hence the reason for our concern, really. Yeah. Right. So okay. we'll keep you informed, but obviously we need to take him now down for a scan. And we'll let you know what's going on. Okay. All being well, if the scan is normal, um, we'll take him to theatre this evening. I can't, again, I can't give you exact time. Um, I need to sort out things with theatre, but... Uh, what if it's not? What if it's not all right? Well, let's see what the results of the scan is first. All right. And hopefully all being well, it'll be all right. But uh, we'll, we'll obviously chat with you as we go along and let you know. All right. The hospital is full today. Morning, Ellen. Oh, good morning. Hello. Thank you, Sheila. Thank Domestic you. Supervisor yes. Sheila Grogan is worried she doesn't have enough staff on duty. As well as looking after the wards, Sheila and her colleague Pam have to organise the cleaning of new premises. The hospital is soon to move into the city centre, into a building Sheila and Pam used to clean when it was Birmingham's former general hospital. It's really a nice hospital, very spacious. It's really, really nice. And the chapel is fantastic, isn't it, Pam? It's only small, but it, the, the walls are marble. Yeah. And the stained glass windows, it's absolutely beautiful. Doctor got married in a chapel. It was lovely, wasn't it? Mm. We all stood outside the chapel holding <laughs> bed pants <laughs> up like this. <laughs> Back on Ward 3, consultant surgeon Peter Gornall has come to make a last-minute check on Gregory before his operation. Oh, where is this rascal? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello, friend. How are you? You've got things on your hands already. Oh, he's had his blood test and he's very brave. Really? Yep. Yeah. Now then, tip your head right back so you can see all the spiders on the ceiling and turn a little bit to the window. <laughs> That's it. Tip your head right back. Right now back. I can see what I'm going to do. That's okay. fine. Gregory, do you know what we're going to be doing for you, my friend? I'm going to do your nose, but I'm also going to do the little hole in the roof of your mouth as well. And we'll do that first. And then and what are you going to be? He's going to be nosy. Gregory New Nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Have you got that, Mr. Paul? Have you got your test? Is that for me? Wow, what did you do? Oh! <laughs> yeah, you're a good friend of mine, you are. Yeah. You really are. Can I stick this on? Kevin is being prepared for his CT scan. By means of X ray technology, the machine will show doctors whether he has sustained any head injuries in the accident. It's more worrying than the actual accident, I think. The scanner makes a computer picture of the soft body tissue in his head. So far, there is no sign of internal bleeding. I think if there were a problem, we would have picked it up by now, I think. But it looks normal. You would have seen it on, we the, would have seen it, on yes. the screen, like yeah. if yeah. anything had been wrong. Yeah. So it's just the morphine that's... That's making him drowsy. It's yeah. Him sleep. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Upstairs, 10-year-old Laura Shutt has arrived from Liverpool for a week-long stay at the hospital. It's been a difficult year for the family. Laura's father, Jerry, recently had a stroke. Her cystic fibrosis is damaging her liver. Here, in the liver unit, the family will learn how bad the damage is and whether a liver transplant would be the best solution. Would you like a drink of tea, Laura? Please. Please. Milk, sugar? Yes, yeah, six sugars. How many? Six. Wow, and you're two. We allow it for the energy levels for wheat. Because of her cystic fibrosis, Laura and her dolls are frequent visitors to hospital. It's nice. Yeah, because you get, she gets to stay at school. But it gets boring after a while. And how, how do you keep yourself occupied? Watching telly and eating. In the kitchens, they're making lunch for 150 patients on the wards. They know how to cater for children's tastes. Jack, we'll get the ice cream for us, Boxy. Some are on special diets, and it's Ian's job to prepare the food for children like yes. Sarah Joy. What do you want for your dinner? Mustard cake and gravy, cheese, carrots, chicken. What do you want for your pudding? Chilling. Okay, then. When I first started, I found it really nerve-wracking. 
children are really blunt and they'll tell you what they think. And I find that quite nerve wracking, but now I found that just a bit of a smile and a bit of a laughter, the kids will really respond and you have fun with them. Oh, got some tomato sauce and some vinegar. Oops. Nice. Now the meals are made on the premises, but when the hospital moves, there'll be big changes for both children and staff. Mm -hmm. Mr. Now we've been asked taxi photographs by Mr. Gornall. Do you want to come over here for the chair for me? Do be careful, it does swivel around. Gregory's progress is being recorded regularly for the hospital's archives. The photos will be used for training new surgeons in cleft palate techniques. Put your tongue like that. That's it. And wide as you can, nice and wide. Can you look up for me? <laughs> oh, we're having fun with this. I need to see right to the back. That's it. Oh, lovely. Okay, nice and wide. And last one. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Upstairs, Laura is ready to give a blood sample. It's part of her assessment for a liver transplant. So how do you like having your blood done then? Well. Tell me about it. Have you got a favourite way you like having it done? Never. Never? Ooh. Well, apart from that, you know, in no. the real world. Just put it in, but you've got to wait till I say yes. That's a deal. Specialist nurse Jill Brook needs to take Laura's blood to test how well her liver is working. Okay. So it's going to be like the SAS, in and out without being noticed. Just give it a good yank. No. Because she has frequent chest infections, Laura often needs antibiotics fed into her bloodstream. To minimise the discomfort, she's had a portacath fitted, a tube which goes directly into a blood vessel in her chest. I'm, just fit. I'm not ready yet. I'll tell you when I'm ready, when I've got the feel of it, OK? And then you can tell me when you're ready. Good girl. OK, you tell me when you're ready. Laura's liver is so scarred that extra blood vessels called varices have grown into her stomach. These could burst at any point and threaten her life. Didn't feel it, did you? Just a thought of it, isn't it? Oh, look, that's brilliant. That's great. OK, let's give me that. Looks horrible. It's now four hours since Kevin's road accident and his parents are reassured he has no head injury. Khalid Baloche has found that Kevin's leg is broken in two places and will need expert attention in theatre. Basically the, the problem as you can see is he's broken the thigh bone. Um, previously we used to treat this on bed rest and traction which used to take oh, four to six weeks of traction. Nowadays, what we're doing is literally um, the rod is about the size of a biro, about the thickness of a biro, uh -huh. so it goes up on each side, one from the inside, one from the outside, um, and the leg is then left free. So will it be in plaster as well as no, these rods? No, no he, plaster. he might be in plaster for this bottom fracture, which I'm just about to talk to you about, but for that one, he doesn't need to be known. Three miles away at the building site, which is to be the new children's hospital, workmen have recently finished the entrance porch. Sheila is not impressed. Nice, isn't it? Do you really like it? It doesn't, like. it doesn't match the building. It's supposed to match the architect. And it doesn't. It looks like a bit of scaffold is stuck on the front. Some people like it. I don't. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> they can't. The old Birmingham General Building is having a complete refit to house the children's hospital. Some of the project is behind schedule. There are only ten weeks for Sheila and her domestics to clean and sterilise before patients arrive. Coping with the builders isn't easy. You will get fed up. They're not wearing over shoes what they're supposed to wear. They're going in in the muddy boots all up the wood. So then was what we've we spent a week cleaning, we've got to do again. Back at the children's hospital on Ward 8, Laura is having physiotherapy. Twice a day, her mother Sheila has to clear the congestion in her lungs caused by cystic fibrosis. It's quite straightforward now. Um, 
initially she was only 18 months and that was very difficult with a small child because she didn't understand it and we couldn't explain it to her. Um, but actually now we do the active cycle which it doesn't entail all of this percussion movement, just some of it. She'll do some um, relaxing breaths. Oh. She'll do four of those. It's so it's not, not all too intense to relax her in between the sequence. And then she'll do a deep breath as I shake on here, and that's to try and shake off any um, sputum from her lungs, which eventually, hopefully, she'll cough up. Well, that was a good one. All right. That was it. So you can see they do benefit from this because it gets it all off. Because if it stays there, it can then easily trap infection. On Ward 3, it's time for Gregory's operation. Can I just check your bracelet, please? 512601. 512601. What we're going to do is put these sides on the bed. It'll be a three hour wait for his mother, Andrea. So see you later, Mum. Daddy's coming with us. In casualty, doctors have prescribed some unusual medicine for six year old Frederick Werner. All right. So, how many bits of toast is that, Frederick? Seven. Well, your young Frederick came around the end of the kitchen. Yeah, and I swallowed and, uh, a pound. And I told very, him I'd swallowed a pound. A then he threw me in condition. the boot. How did it happen, Frederick? I thought it was chocolate. Dr. Samtosh Golka is hoping the toast will send the coin on its way down Frederick's gullet. If it stays where it is, Frederick could be in trouble. It's the level of the tenth rib. And if a coin doesn't move, it essentially means that he can't swallow, he can't eat anything. And if it doesn't move, it can introduce infection, it could cut the esophagus, and food will get stuck behind it. OK, so what we'll do is we'll wait for another hour. And we'll re-x-ray Keep the fingers crossed, shall we? Down in theatre, Gregory has arrived for his anaesthetic. Right then, what we need to do is jump up here for us. Can you manage what that to give you hands? Just cover you up, OK? Keep it nice and warm. Surgeon Peter Gornall scrubs up. Actually, while I was changing for this operation, I was thinking, you know, how, how is it we've got here? And the thing is, we've, we've concentrated much more on his speech in the last two to three years. So now we can concentrate much more on what he looks like. But a little hole in the roof of his mouth is not a big problem, but uh, all the foods that he likes to keep in his mouth, like yoghurt and chocolate and the rest, tend to leak in his nose, and that's unpleasant. So we can stop that, or we can at least um, make it much less. Well, he needs to feel the same as everybody else. And he needs to know that there's actually something there. And when he looks in the mirror, it doesn't look so different from the next boy who's looking in the mirror. And it has to find your brain before you go off to sleep. You've got to remember, you've got to count to 100. Now see how many. Oh, no! <laughs> so That's not fair! You got to <laughs> the first person has ever counted to 100. Yes, yeah. before you went to sleep. Well, you could probably do that about three times, couldn't you? You count to 300. You're hey, All right, Greg. He's getting there, isn't he? Good, OK, Dad. Thanks a lot. OK. We'll take good care of him. And we'll see you a bit later on. All right. Laura and her family must make up their minds in the next few days whether she should have a liver transplant. Specialist nurse Jill Brooke wants to be sure that Laura herself understands what's involved. Okay. Have there any questions that your mum and dad would like to know about having, having people having liver transplants, Laura? Um, you had a couple of <coughs> questions, didn't you? What? You were asking. He wants to know, will your tummy not be as big? Will my tummy not be as big? That's right, your tummy won't be as big. Will I still have these on my face? No, those will go. Yeah, I like them. Mm. Mm. Will I get fatter there on my wrist? Why particularly there? Because it looks skinny and looks skinny. Well, you will get more fat on you. It takes quite a number of months for that yeah. to happen, but uh, your tummy mean? won't go down to mini size straight away. 
it'll count a number of months. It probably probably won't. You'll be at home by the time it's a bit smaller. But you'll still have cystic fibrosis. Yeah, I know yeah. that. But but uh, a lot of children who've had most children who've had liver transplants when the lungs have been obviously in reasonably good nick. They've done well, extremely well. Um, yeah, I haven't fully understood that to begin with, mm. that it would uh, benefit the mm. lungs as well. Yeah. Laura takes supplements to help her digestion. Though she eats a lot, she doesn't gain weight. Yes. Well, Laura, this is fascinating. I've never seen you eat so fast in all your life. She's starving. I've she had, had no any lunch. dinner and no breakfast. I've only had two. Yeah, jet tea and toast and three packets of crisps. Oh. It just feels like you haven't. Mm. OK. Back on casualty, Kevin is kept warm while waiting for the operation on his leg. His stepfather is looking on the bright side. He should be all right. Now we've seen the CT scans are OK, then you know, and that, that sort of puts your mind at rest. But uh, we'll see when the operation is done. We'll see how he goes. Gregory has now been in the operating theatre for two hours. Straight needle holder, please. Surgeon Peter Gornell has closed the larger holes in his palate, but decided to leave two small holes near his teeth until he's older. I hope this is the last stitch going in. Next, the team must begin to reshape Gregory's nose. Can I have a caliper and, um, and a pen? Thank you very much. I've got a lot of spare skin here and here, which I can use uh, to push up into the nose. So I'm going to measure there. Now, how long is that? Let's just see. Six millimetres long. So that should give us an, a, a, a good amount of skin to push up this way. Joe, you better come back in a bit closer now for a minute. Gregory's parents are finding the weight no easier than in all the previous operations. Oh, oh just wishing it was over now. Just got to wait and wish it was over. When it's finished, I'll be a lot happier. Yeah, it's just that weight, isn't it? I suppose for me, the worst thing is we've got another 16 years of this. We don't know what, when, how, but he, he, he's certain to have um, some fairly major jaw surgery. Uh, we think about eight, nine, somewhere in the region of there. So we're just going through, yeah, it's one closer to the end, but there isn't an end in sight. The nostrils have changed shape. They're sort of triangular and facing forwards, and there's, there's a good bit of dome here now. Can have a pair of scissors, please? And um, a lot of this tissue, which I've stolen out of the lip, is already up in the nose, and this is um, something like three times longer than it was before. Uh, still, to some extent, a child's nose, and in, as, as he, he grows, his, uh, his nose will need to, still will need to mature. Yeah, that looks as if that'll work, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, like that? That'll work, yes, OK. But I think this is like model making, to me. It re reminds me of what I used to do as a lad. Meanwhile, Frederick has come back to radiology for another X-ray. The picture will show whether the pound coin he swallowed is still stuck in his gullet. It could do damage. It either could poke a hole in it, or it could... But the good news, it could just go fall straight down. Then I'm about to go straight home. While they wait for Dr. Golka to return, he's got the taste for toast. In the meantime, Kevin's been found a bed on the trauma ward, where anaesthetist Matthew Cornish has come to check his details for the operation. Has he had any uh, operations before at all? Or? Yes. Yeah. Um, he's had um, operation on his nose. He tore his nose. When he, uh, a couple of years ago, right, or a couple okay. of years before that, he had he had an orthotic and grommets put in his ears. Okay. Can't say how long it's going to take them, really. We just have to wait and see. Yeah. With these nails in the leg, it, it, um, you know, it can can take quite a long time. You know, <coughs> talking about a couple of hours, perhaps. So we'll, we'll just play it by ear. See how he, see how he goes. Okay. What's the matter? All right. Oh. You're still a bit sore, Kevin? Right, well. yeah. OK. I think the right. painkillers are wearing off. Yeah, well, I'll just have a quick look and see okay. how sure much he's had. Minute. And we can um, maybe just give him a little bit more beforehand. Lying down again, then. Up on Ward 8, 
While Laura has her second physiotherapy session, her parents are beginning to take on board that her condition will get worse if she doesn't have a liver transplant. If I said I didn't want her to have this, right, what would her quality of life be like? And what would her life expectancy be? For starters, we know that a liver disease will not will not get any better. The scar, yeah, the scar in her liver will get worse, and her varices would get worse. Of course, the varices. And, yeah. and I don't know how I tend to forget about the varices. The varices will well, never you do break down. You have to get on with the rest well, of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and, that, and they will become worse, and that that's probably from a liver point of view, her most life threatening problem. Is the risk that she could bleed from the significant varices she has in her food pipe in her esophagus? I just want to be absolutely sure that we've got no choice. Absolutely right. Absolutely, Shayla. Absolutely. I don't think we've got a choice, have we? Well, I think that there is always a choice because that's why we need to give you uh, honest information yeah. about all the risks. What I maybe need to just move on to is actually the potential benefits for that because mm. with Laura she, we're getting rid of the most significant yeah. part of her life-threatening illness which is her liver but you know she still has her chest yeah. which is you know hopefully would improve per, after this liver well, transplant. Said so, yeah. Yeah. It's a hard road to tread. In casualty, Frederick is about to be told the results of his second X-ray by Dr. Golkar. Yes. Oh, right. See that? Yeah. Uh, I nearly thought that wasn't going to work. Man. Okay. But how right. Did you get through? Have you seen that? It's got through there. But how? The food but how? You pushed it down. You toast. Because you ate the food and it pushed it through. So the food pushed it out. Pushed it down. And, yeah. and we tried to squeeze through, but that fell out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And before it was up here, yeah. now it's gone through the stomach and it's in the stomach there. But he's safe to go home now. He's safe. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> be so okay. it's fallen through, so it's fine now. So we can go home. We can go home. Brilliant. Okay? There's good news too for Gregory's mother, Andrea. After three hours, the operation on his nose is over. Hello, sweetheart. From your new nose that you've got. Hi, Yellow. Oh, bless. Does he normally lie on his tummy? He does. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll just like ask the nurses bit. to keep a special watch because I don't want him to flatten the nose that, that I've just been made. working on. No, no, that's fine. Oh, yeah. right, well, we've, as you can tell, we've taken a lot of skin out of the lip. That's a different. <laughs> I can't believe. It. Thanks, Mr. Cole. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Next week, Gregory is back, playing football. Kevin begins the long road to recovery. 12-year-old Gemma Barris gets the operating team worried. And it's decision time for Laura and her parents. <laughs>